Hey everyone, today we're looking at market-based supply-side policies. So from our last video, I, I briefly introduced market-based supply-side policies. That's where the government sort of removes itself from the economy a little bit and makes it more like a free market. So benefits of doing that is that we let competition occur. We'll explain how. And we let incentives um, do their thing without the government sort of manipulating those incentives too much. All right, so let's look at how that happens. So one way to encourage competition is privatization. You might not have heard of this word before. Privatization is the selling of government enterprises to the private sector. So uh, for an example of that, that was letting, letting a private sector run all the the buses and trains and trams in South Australia. Another example is uh, when the government sold off its electricity generation, right? Uh, that got sold to the private sector. So how does this work? It shifts, shifts LRS. Now the reason being, and therefore SRS, remember that, they always shift together. Now the reason being that a private company has a, a higher profit motive. Like they, um, they're incentivized to, to make as much profit as possible. That's their incentive. So they will make more profit if they are more efficient and more productive, right? Whereas the government don't have that same incentive. And therefore the thinking is that they are less likely to be efficient they're going or they're going to be less efficient and less productive so if we move that to the private sector more efficiency more productivity that is the thinking next uh, deregulation that's when we remove government rules all right so again the government is becoming less involved they're, they're enforcing fewer rules just like in privatization government becoming less involved leaving it to the free market so Similar thing will happen here. The businesses will cut costs. So arguably this happens first um, for deregulation. Businesses will cut costs because they won't have to spend time complying with government rules. Now, the theory here is that these are government rules that aren't particularly useful, that maybe are a bit overbearing and therefore they, they make businesses be less efficient because they're constantly trying to keep up with um, compliance of the rules. So that should let them produce more than they could before. If this happens across an economy, we should be more productive. So it really, the idea is that it lets firms focus on producing their goods and services. So it lets them focus on their core activities, not complying with the government rules and the legislation. Okay, trade liberalization. This is the lowering of trade barriers. So things like tariffs, right? So for example, what just happened there? For example, we have, we've recently signed an Australia UK free trade agreement, and that has lowered our tariffs from both sides on on many goods so for example the uk have agreed to lower their their tariffs on australian beef so we are going to sell more beef to them right now why is this good uh, it can increase our exports right so that can happen it sort of depends on the mix of the free trade agreement and the relative size size of the the market so we're going to export more, but we might also import more because things are going to be cheaper to buy from the UK than they were before. But what's also going to happen, it's going to lower our costs uh, because we're going to buy inputs from the UK and they're going to be cheaper than they were before because we're not paying taxes on those, on those imports. The, the companies in Australia aren't paying taxes to import those goods. So those goods are cheaper and this, the way this increases the potential output is because our businesses are 
they're facing more competition than they did before. So previously they're protected by tariffs. It's called trade protection, it protects local businesses from competition. Now that there's more competition, they have to be more productive if they want to survive, right? They've got to uh, be better or lower their costs or both in order to survive. And that the theory is that that will increase long run aggregate supply. Okay, anti-monopoly regulation. So restricting mon monopoly power. So that's things like the ACCC, that's what they do, right? They Remember they restrict mergers. They, they make rules about how much power any one company can have. So uh, the example here, Coles and Woolworths, I've said it many times, Coles and Woolworths would never be allowed to merge because there would be way too much market power. There's a fair argument right now that there is already too much market power in the supermarket industry and therefore that's why prices are so high. There's an argument there. Uh, so what this does is if it stops there being market power concentrated in too fewer companies, what it means is that there's more competition. So the more competition there is, the more efficient and productive you have to be to make profits. So that's what firms will do. They'll, be, they'll work out the best way to do things because they have to if they want to survive. And the box industry, we've talked about that one as well. So LRAS, remember LRAS is shifting, increasing productivity. You know, that's increasing that profit motive. And anytime we're shifting LRAS, we're shifting SRAS. Okay, where are we? Reducing unemployment benefits is another one. Now this seems pretty harsh, honestly, uh, but it's, it is widely promoted. Um, Scott Morrison is maybe a bit of a fan of this. Uh, so reducing unemployment benefits. It's not just because we hate poor people, but the theory is that if it's too comfortable to be unemployed, then people don't have an incentive to better themselves and find a job, right? So if they, if they really need to get a job, people will work out that they need to be more productive and that will increase potential output in the economy. And of course, if we're more productive, then we are also decreasing costs of production at the same time. So SRS is shifting. Okay, I think this might be the last one. Lowering income tax. It's also going to increase our incentives. So here's what is happening as of the 1st of July this year, 2024 that is. So these are current tax rates. So you earn that between that much, tax rate is zero, any dollars earned above that, between above 18,200 and below 45, get taxed at 19% and so on. What happens 1st of July is that these tax rates fall 19% to 16%. So everyone who earns between 18 and $45,000 gets a tax cut. Well, everyone who earns above 18,200 gets a tax cut because I still pay 16% on my income in between these two figures. And then this one, there's a tax cut, 32.5%, 30%. And this one, too many commas, uh, more people are going to be in the the 30% the thirty tax bracket because that's now bigger. So essentially they would have been paying 37 before, some of these people. So that's reduced their tax. It's a tax cut for them. And the top rate also only kicks in at a higher level. So everyone, every taxpayer will pay less tax under this plan. And what... The idea here is that that incentivizes people to be productive. So if I want to work hard and get a promotion, let's say I would earn an extra 10 grand a year, right? So here's my tax bracket, 30, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%,
right? So rather than paying 32 and a half cents tax for every extra dollar I earn, I now only pay 30%. So that raise, I would have, I would have paid, if I had $10,000 raise, I would have paid 3,250 in tax. Now I only pay 3,000 in tax. So it's, I have a greater incentive to be more productive and earn more money. So that should lead to these outcomes. Increase in productivity, shifts LRS, and then SRS will shift with that as everyone is more efficient as well. And there is one more, lowering business tax. This was a pretty huge tax cut. So business tax, this is tax on businesses' profits. So this happened in the US. 35% was their tax rate, which was quite high, higher than Australia. And uh, during the Trump presidency, the first Trump presidency, perhaps, uh, 21% huge tax cut. So that incentivizes firms to invest more in capital. If they invest more, they can make bigger profits. Well, a, they've got more money left over after their profits to invest because the tax rate is low. So they've got more money left over. They can invest. And they've got more an incentive to invest because they get to keep more of the profits in the keep more of the future profits as well. So much more incentive. So investing in capital increases the quantity and quality of resources, LRS, SRS. Okay, some constraints on these. Um, tax reductions aren't always equal across the board. So for example, um, the, the liberal policy on the tax cuts that happened from 1 July 2024 were that the tax cuts would mostly go to the higher income earners. So there would be an equity issue there. Uh, Labor changed that so it was a bit more evenly spread across, across the range of workers. Um, any labor market policies can affect equity. So that labor market policy that we looked at was reducing unemployment benefits. Um, obviously that's going to affect um, the fairness in the economy. And there can be vested interests in these which can push these reforms to happen. So uh, business lobby groups will always lobby for lower business taxes and say, well, look, we'll be more competitive with the rest of the world if we have lower business taxes. So sometimes perhaps the policies can happen, maybe not for the best of the economy, but for the best of the interest groups who are pushing for the change, the ones who are advocating for the change. Um, same with deregulation. Businesses want less regulation because it costs them money to follow the rules. So if they get less regulation, better off for it. Um, also deregulation, a big way they want less regulation is environmental regulation. So uh, they don't might not have to get environmental impact statements done before they destroy a, a forest, for example. So there could be the argument would be that there would be more environmental destruction if there weren't rules about it. Like it's the market failure we learned about with common access resources, really. Uh, worker safety regulations are often about worker safety as well, so they could also be be worse off. Um, all those safety precautions that happen on work sites, they're largely the result of of government regulation to keep people safe. A lot of businesses would be perfectly prepared to risk their employees um, in order to make a bit more profit. And that's, that's an unfortunate reality. And of course, there are time lags. Uh, any supply side policy, the, la the firms take time to respond to the incentives. So they're not gonna get more productive overnight if you deregulate. If you, if you privatize them overnight, are they immediately more productive? No, these things take time. So a time lag is definitely a constraint on these. Okay, that is what we have time for, and I will see you in class.